Hi again. Let's learn how to make 3D spinning shapes in PowerPoint. There are three pretty easy steps. First, make your object. Second, add animations. And third, create layers to make the rotating effect. Let's start with making our object. For this demo, I'll make a simple cube. I'll start with a square and recolor it to match the background. Now we're ready to make it 3D. Go to Shape Styles or Format Shape. Let's go to the rotation and let's just put 20 degrees on the X and 20 on the Y just so that you can better see the depth being formed. Now go to Format and change the color of the depth. I'll make it a darker purple. And you can see that as I increase the depth, the square becomes 3D. I'll make the depth about 200 points. It's not a perfect cube, but good enough to show you guys the effect. All right, so now we've got our object and are ready to animate. The ironic thing about the animations is that they're actually easier in PowerPoint 2007, although they can be done in 2010 as well. In 2007, you should add a flash once effect to your cube. Make it last between about 0.05 and 0.1 seconds and make it start after previous. And if you have 2010 like I do, you'll have to basically recreate the flash effect manually by adding an appear effect and then a disappear effect right after it. Make them both start after previous, and let's make the delay in the disappear effect 0.08 seconds. Okay, great, and you'll see what the animation effects will look like after we finish layering, which is our next step. This is basically like making a flipbook, where you move the object a tiny bit with every layer to create a motion effect. Our first layer will just be the two-dimensional square, actually, so let's hide the depth. Go to Format Shape and make the X and Y both zero. So the depth is still there, just hidden. Now let's copy the square and start rotating it in layers. Go back to Format Shape. And actually, before I go any further, let me just quickly show you what the rotation options are. There's the X, the Y, and the Z, and here's what the motion is for each of them. What I'll be showing you is how to do a 180 degree turn on the X and at the same time a 180 degree turn on the Y. So hopefully this graphic helps you visualize how the rotation will work. So to get that motion effect, we'll rotate each new layer by 10 degrees on both the X and Y axis. Now it's important to place it exactly on top by using the guides, otherwise it won't look smooth when you animate it. Okay, now repeat the process. Copy the object and go to Format Shape again. Increase the rotation by 10 degrees on the X and Y. And again, place it exactly on top of the last layer. And repeat the process again. The more you want to rotate, the more layers you need to make. And don't worry, I won't make you sit through the whole thing. I'll just show you one more and then I'll speed up the other 14. There are 19 layers total. One for the first square and then 18 others for each 10 degree rotation. Here's what it looks like when you have all the layers. I did increments of 10 degrees for this one, but if you want it to look even smoother, you can do increments of 5 degrees. But this will, of course, double the layers you'll need to make, so you'll have to be really patient. Note that for the very last layer, you want to remove the disappear animation if you want the cube to stay at the end. By the way, the rectangles didn't start numbering at 1 for me for some reason, which is why the numbers there are higher than 19. And here's your final animation. You can, of course, play around with how fast it goes, the rotation angles, and different shapes as you saw at the beginning. And one other thing to keep in mind is this layering technique can be used for drawings as well. For example, when you layer the flower, it looks a lot like petals in the back. The sun rotation also creates a really neat effect. Well, and that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you learned something new and see you again soon.